What's going on everybody? My name is Blake Connolly. If you don't know me or you don't know my channel, I mainly make videos on investing, businesses, technology, anything around those spaces, I make videos about it. Um, today specifically is gonna be talking about automation. If you don't know, I run an automation agency. That's mainly the work that we do for our clients is building different automation and data analytics programs and software for them. I'm also joined by Coda today. He's the dog of choice for the video. He's gonna be hanging out with me, so I'm gonna put him out real quick and we'll get started. All right, so this video is gonna be separated into two different chunks. The first one is gonna be talking about the business benefits that you get from automation software. And the second part is we're actually going to dig in and show you how you can build automation software and what is the mindset of going through it and architecting a solution for it. If you're interested, we're gonna be using Node.js as the backend framework, backend language, and then uh, Puppeteer is a library that allows you to scrape different websites. First part of it is going to be the business benefits. Why would you do this as a business? Why is it necessary or how could it benefit you, right? Say you're a business and you've got 100 or 200 sales representatives and every day they have to input, uh, let's say notes on their customers that they go and visit. What you can do is set it up so they enter at one place and it spreads out to many other places. It's really common for clients to come to us and say, hey, we've got all these representatives, they're, they're entering notes here, we want it sent to one CRM and then the CRM needs to send that data to one of our fulfillment partners. From there, it needs to be sent to manufacturing, whatever the supply chain or the logistics look like, figuring out how do you automate that. So one piece of it is you can improve efficiency for your workers and have them actually doing the tasks they're meant to be doing, their actual job role, instead of doing data entry. I know of plenty of people who have gone in as a software engineer and they've gone to sign responsibilities that are like, data entry. If you're a software engineer, you should not be doing data entry. A person who is specific to data entry or a machine should be able to handle that for you. So that's a really basic solution of what automation software can do for you. Um, if you want to get more complex, there's things like doing predictive analytics on data that is scraped from the web, building different machine learn learning models based off of data you're automatically scraping from the web or different data sources or IoT devices. The list is endless for automation software. You think of any repetitive task and consider is this actually, can you actually automate this? It only becomes a question when you're comparing, you know, price to return or cost to return. So if you're spending $30,000 on software that's automating some task, is it really going to bring you enough value and generate you enough money to sacrifice the $30,000? So that's just the concept of it. Automation software is very simple. Anything that's repetitive that you don't wanna be doing yourself or you don't want your team to be doing or you could increase efficiency with, that's when you would introduce uh, automation software. With our solution today, we're gonna to be focusing on coronavirus because coronavirus is so blown up right now. Literally everywhere, stores are shut down. You know, you can't go to restaurants, it's only like pickup. Banks are closing down, like it's crazy, the stuff's going on, stock market's down. Everybody is aware of all the stuff going on. So. We're gonna use that as a test case for building the software. Like I said, we're gonna use Node.js and Puppeteer to actually do this. This is a, base, a very basic form of an automation platform, automation software. We're gonna be visiting Worldometer, which is a website that reports statistics on coronavirus, and we're gonna scrape simple values out of it. We're gonna show you how do you go to a website, how do you pick out an element, how do you get that value back, and then you can use that data as you please. Extremely basic scenario with automation software, but this just introduces you guys into the capabilities of what you can do with it. In other videos, we're gonna talk about things like scaling a solution, building automation software with scraping applications like Selenium and Puppeteer that um, are much more, much more involved, much larger using different tools to get access to different pieces of data and websites. So we're gonna cover that in later, later videos, but let's jump into the actual example now. Okay guys, so we are set up here. What we're gonna be using is Node.js, like I told you. We've got just a very basic JavaScript file set up here. Um, we're importing a library called Puppeteer Extra. If you don't know what Puppeteer is, go ahead and look up their API documentation. I will throw that in the description as well. This is super simple to use. So we've just in imported the package here. We've got a launch method that we're using that we're passing in. Some options here, headless, false. Um, we actually don't need this data directory for this example. Um, so what Headless is doing is saying whether or not we want to open up a browser. So we leave it on false, it will open up a browser. All you have to do is node worldometer, browser pops up, this is what we're able to actually control. If we use uh, true, launch it again, it's running, the browser is actually initialized and you can still, fun you can still put functions through it, but uh, it doesn't actually show up. So for testing, 
We always set it to false. For performance, you'll always set it to true. So what we're gonna be doing is visiting Worldometer to get some of the coronavirus statistics. So we'll pull that up here. There we go. We've got the amount of coronavirus cases, deaths and recovered here. Uh, we're gonna specifically be targeting this number. We wanna get this out of the website and be able to do whatever we want with it. First thing is, is we've got the URL here. So that's what we're gonna be visiting. Um, all we have to do to start off is actually create a page object. Uh, we're gonna do browser dot new page. And then we're going to do await page go to. And this will be our URL. Cool, so that's where we're going. That should direct us right to our worldometer page. Voila, we've got it. That was super simple. Um, we're on the page, you'll tell the aspect ratio is a bit weird here. That's an option you can pass through Puppeteer to change that if you want it to be wider, smaller, or any different size changes you wanna do. So what we're gonna do is pick out this number once again. So let's go ahead and inspect element on it. See how we can find uh, find a way to target this, right? So you can target all of the elements through Puppeteer through DOM elements or DOM selectors. So this one is a span. Uh, we can go one more up. This is main counter number. That is, yeah, so it's it's replicated multiple times, so it's not the best to use for an ID. You can see it's kind of weird how they actually have, they're using the same ID for several different divs, which is a bit weird, you shouldn't do that. One ID should only be assigned to one element. Um, regardless, we're gonna target it with main counter number, since this is probably the first element out of the series of elements that has this class. That's the one we're gonna go to um, initially. You can also select different indexes if you wanted um, the second or third element. It's all the same, so. Okay, so we're gonna use this class here. That's what we're gonna target with. And we will just use page.wait for selector. And then we will pass that through. It's actually going to be, let me make sure what this is. This is main counter number. So this is gonna be a period. There we go. And then since this is a promise, we're gonna do then async function and we're gonna look for the total cases. Total cases equals await.page and eval. This allows you to pass through a um, DOM selector. So we're gonna take main counter number and that's just what we want. So we want the main counter number and then span main counter number and then span. That's the element we're looking for. So main counter number gets us there, span gets us to there, and that will get us that value. We'll go ahead and get the element from there. We actually want the element.enterHTML. So this allows us to select from there. Total cases, and then we're just gonna log out, console.log, total, total cases. And that should get us what we want. We'll go ahead and do a browser.close as well to close the browser after we're finished. So now if we run it, browser should pop up. We should get um, the page loaded and we should be able to get the total cases, log it out and then close. Run it, goes to it. We have an error. So this is target closed. This may be closing too soon actually. I think it is. We should actually close it within the um, Node.js promise I believe. We'll double check on that though. Yep, there we go. So we're just closing it too early. Um, this wasn't actually finishing, so it was trying to get this element and it was closing, uh, it was finishing after the, the close happened. So be aware of that. But as you can see, total cases, we got it. And that's it, super simple with Puppeteer. Think of all the different ways you can utilize this. This is just a very simple example of how you can visit a web page, scrape data off of it, get the values. So think about all the different possibilities you have with this. Um, using Puppet here is it's really flexible. You can even I'm going to show you guys another example here uh, with the headless version. We'll turn this to true. Browser won't open up, but we should still get the same value. Cool. Yeah, didn't load up. Still gave us the same value there. We just didn't actually close the browser, so we would want to include that in here, and that will finish it out. Boom. There you go. That's all it takes to get data out of a website. Start thinking creative with this. Figure out how you can uh, help other businesses or automate different areas inside of your businesses with tools like this. Whether you need data scraping, whether you need to automate repetitive tasks, whatever it is, Puppeteer is a great option to help you do that. If you all need help implementing this, please feel free to reach out to me. I'm more than happy to consult on um, how you can build large complex solutions with Puppeteer or other frameworks. 
we built a ton of these and really this is just more an introduction into how you get into automation, how you start scraping for data and building data sets. And hopefully it helped you guys get a better understanding of what we do, how we help customers and potentially how you could start helping people as well. So that pretty much wraps it up today. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Stay tuned for some more videos on automation, predictive analytics, scraping data, all types of different tools. We're gonna to be covering those in more videos. This is just a simple introduction into uh, what we do. So thanks guys, have a great day.